Um, good afternoon. Um, I have a what do you say vertical handicap, so this, this desk is a little bit high. Uh, in, in Sweden, everything is higher, taller than me, so but <laughs> that might be in trouble. But anyway, my name is Kenzuri Kitake, and uh, I'm glad, very glad to be here in Stockholm for the first time in my life. I'm originally from Tokyo, Japan, and this is my first time at the Oral User Conference. And I like everything in this conference, the atmosphere and the people and everything. Okay, and actually this is my eighth time uh, to be on the Online Factory Series of conferences. conferences. Um, I actually made three presentations on random numbers at three conferences sponsored by Iron Solutions in 2011, 2013, and 15. And this is a false presentation. I hope this will be the last one because um, I, don't want, I don't want to repeat the same thing many times. But uh, um, on the topic of the random number module handling in our OTP. So, why I want you to leave the random module? Because the module is already deprecated in OTP 19.0. Uh, when you try to compile a random module, you will see the error message or better say, warning message. And it will be removed from ODP 20, uh, ODP 20, better say. Um, the ODP 20 will be coming, um, Kenneth said, June, tw June 2017, I, I rem as I remember. So I should say, our time is running out, and so does yours. Um, start your migration now, if you're planning. So. Let me talk about the, all the history of the random module code. It was originally, no, it is originally called AS183. It's de derived from the paper, uh, which includes the uh, whole algorithm. It is published in 90, 1982 and originally designed for 16 bit computers, 30, uh, 34 years ago, and has a relatively short period of approximately 2 to the power of 43. It sounds big, but on 2014, I've shown a proof of concept code written in C uh, with a single core of Intel Core R5, single core, not even multi-core. Multi and I succeeded to uh, get through the cycle and uh, return to the beginning point for less than nine hours. That's a nine hours in the modern small computer. So the, I have to say that AS183 is fully exploited. Um, this is absolutely not the safe random number to use, but uh, for, the, um, um, for many things, this is, I have to say this is archaic. And this is a code in Fortran. Why Fortran? Because the original code was in Fortran. And um, I'm surprised to know that it's still on the Microsoft sa site of ex explaining Excel 2003's implementation. I don't know whether Excel, two, Excel right now, maybe probably 2016 on Office Suite, has this. But the issue is that um, the code is there is not much different from the LN current code. And uh, if you see the uh, variables of IX, I, 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 Z, these are less than 32,000 or 15 bits. So the uh, value space um, it takes is very narrow or small. And you can find a similar code in the random module. So let me summarize the uh, random module issues. It has three issues. The period of algorithm is simply too short, and you need to explicit, explicitly give the initial state or seed to the function. I will, re I will repeat the issue in a later, later slide. And otherwise, it will always start from the same default seed value, and this is a, this is a big problem when you try to uh, set a different seed into different processes. And uh, you can't do that as a default, and that's uh, a uh, kind of big design flaw. And uh, this is really bad because it gives a predictability. Also, many people still see the function with a deprecated earn now function, earn now slash zero function. 
And this is also a very bad practice because the seeding value can be easily guessed from the current time. And uh, Alan actually has a history of issuing a CVE, common vulnerability, in 2011 to accidentally use random modules function in SSH. This was a big failure, but now it's fixed, so it's good. Okay, before getting into the details of the leaving the random module, um, there are many purposes, uh, possible purposes of random number, and you need to think about the purpose of the randomness, which you want. Uh, some people want it for security, uh, for generating keys or passwords, and for some people do want it for simulation of covering the random space with uh, probably with the Monte Carlo method. And if your code need to run either before or after run module, a lot I think lots of people no not people sorry about that lots of code have this requirement. Um, which should be run before or after OTP 18, you need to think about the conditional implementation or the um, selective implementation within the module. Okay, so let's get down to the business. All right, I'm going to read the um, every uh, title <laughs> just for um, to to show this, to summarize what I would like to say. Okay, number one, check the compiler time error message of deprecated functions. First of all, you, all you, can, first of all, you can find out the usage of now deprecated functions, not only, but not only random, or, but of course in, in, include random module by compiling the code. And uh, this, on the slide, there's a module called OTP internal obsolete, which lists all the obsolete uh, code deprecated or removed or whatever. So um, uh, by this code, the compiler exactly show that uh, if you're using a random module, it's deprecated, use a random module instead. So listen to the compiler, listen to the advice first. Okay, number two, if you are going to generate the passwords, use crypto module for secure, secure random number generation. If you need a randomly generated strong password or key, uh, use crypt module actually, which is a wrapper of the OpenSSL RAND underscore bytes function. And I know there's a lot of people concerned about OpenSSL vulnerability recently, and uh, OpenSSL indeed has lots of problems but it's still better than your code, I can guarantee. And so, um, if you don't believe in OpenSSL, you can, you can choose another option, but uh, in most cases, OpenSSL gives you enough security on generating random numbers. And uh, here, I use a function called crypto strong round bytes. And remember, other round bytes function in Erlen are deprecated. Okay, number three, use dev urandom for security. If you don't trust OpenSSL, you can directly fetch random values from the operating system interfaces. And this is, this is a very tri uh, trivial way, but um, not so many people are doing this. And a popular one is dev urandom. Um, and why I put the U here is because uh, there are a lot of arguments in the Linux community that uh, you, you should do dev random or instead dev u random, but I, I personally think that dev u random is enough for most uses. And for the other operating system like FreeBSD or OS X, uh, I mean a Mac OS, those two are the, the two implementation, uh, dev random and dev u random, are exactly the same device. So use dev u random if you have if you don't have any specific other reasons. But the, the problem, you know, you have to, uh, there's one issue that debut random is not a regular device. So it's not a file. So it cannot, you cannot open uh, debut random by file open function on Erlang. So 
you have to have an all on port program to fetch the data. Uh, the command here, um, it's always command, uh, it's, it's a very uh, tiny, uh, quickly hacked code. And this, show, this shows um, how to get the information from dev random. But um, um, f generally speaking, uh, you need to have an error recovery code. And that's, um, I, I won't describe that here, but well described, that, that is well described in the footnote uh, URL of this slide. Um, this slide is already open, so you can, you can check it later. Okay, number four, use entropy supplying system calls for security. Uh, in some extreme cases, like uh, under the denial of services attacks where uh, external intruders are trying to uh, consume every file descriptor so that you cannot access to the dev for you random, this is a very extreme case, I mean, even I don't want to imagine. But for even, those, even in those cases, some people uh, want to access to the uh, uh, random number generator, I mean secure random number generator. So for those people, um, entropy supply system calls are often better than using dev u random because they do not block, they're not filed, they do not block, and can directly access the entropy pools of, of the operating systems. And on Linux and Solaris, they have get random and get entropy C functions. Um, but uh, on the other hand, FreeBSD implements this as a system, sys sys control man management information base and can be called as, a, as an operating system command shown in the slide. Of course, you can use a direct call in C, uh, the CCTL function, but uh, this, is the, this is a more easy way to show you, so uh, I use the CCTL command instead. Okay, number five. Use hardware random number generator for security. For maintaining a high quality secure random number feed from the operating system, you need to supply enough random bits or entropy to the operating system. Um, recently, a Black Hat, in a Black Hat presentation in the USA on 2015, there was a research about how many entropy bits you can get in an operating system. And uh, the amount is uh, surprisingly small, uh, less than 100 bits per second. And this is very small concerning the uh, enormous use of randomness in the recent uh, T T TLS or SSL, uh, those secure protocols. So um, I should conclude that uh, obtaining uh, enough entropy is not adequately done just by, just by running a computer, especially a server. And uh, even, it is even worse in a virtualization environment because you have to share the entro entropy of the, vir um, the host, host computer, to host operating system to the, each of the virtual operating systems. So adding an external random bit, random bit generator from physical sources will effectively solve the problem. And this is a kind of advertisement. Not, I'm not selling this, but this is what I made. Uh, let me introduce, uh, this is called AVR Hardware Random Number Generator. Um, it's AVR HWRNG. And um, I built it over as an Arduino Uno uh, our, our revision tree seal device for generating physical, number gener physical numbers physical random numbers. And I've been testing this since 2008. And finally, I fixed the design on uh, June. And um, I actually built a um, DICE device and show it, showed it to the, at the Maker Fair Tokyo 2016 on August. And um, uh, I was surprised that quite a lot of people were interested in uh, what the random number is. And this was a very uh, present surprise for me. But anyway. Um, connecting this, I actually connect, connected this device to FreeBSD servers for more than one month or more uh, two months, and consecutive, uh, consecutively, and um, it gives very good results for weeks, and it gives um, about 80 kbps. And uh, for the safety, for every physical random number generator, 
you have to use a hash function like SHA-256 or 512 or SHA-2 or SHA-3 functions so that you can make it more secure in the cryptographic sense. But even, even doing that, the, um, the result of uh, the result speed will be exceeding a 10 kilo BPS, which is far better than the, uh, that, uh, the entropy generated solely by the operating system or host computer. So um, the source code and schematics and all the technical details of this device are on GitHub. And then if you, if you are interested, you can ask me later after this presentation. So I'm going to use a big slide about this. Number six, seeding RAND module is different from seeding random module. I was asked this on the Twitter. Uh, one, of the, one of the Twitter users asked me that I couldn't see the RAND module. Please help me. <laughs> so um, uh, I realized that uh, I have to compile some information about this. Uh, because the semantics of seeding between the RAND module and random module is a bit different. Sometimes the difference is so subtle. It's, um, it's, it's a hard to understand, so I will explain it in details here. Okay, 6.0, uh, seeding in per process and functional APIs. Um, the RAND and random modules have two different sets of APIs. The first one uses per process seeding, which stores the seed in the process dictionary. The other one is the functional API giving the seed in the function argument. And in many use cases, people just use the process dictionary. And um, that does not affect the quality of randomness, so long as you are, you are understanding that you are depending on the process dictionary. OK, 6.1. Random module needs explicit and different seeding for each process. Uh, random module C slash 0 function has a flaw that it always returns the same value. And that is not good if you are trying to um, seeding for many processes at the same time. So in random module, you have to do the explicit seeding for each process. This is required. And with time-related functions, or even cryptographic functions, and in old days, you used RAN Earl and now, but the, in modern, uh, after 8.0, you use these three functions. These are new functions, actually only available from 8.80.0, but uh, these new functions are far better than Earl and now. So if you are doing something like that, you should use them. OK, 6.1, continuing. Um, Per process API functions in random module is automatically seeded on the first call. Yes, in random module, you do not need to call the seeding function explicitly if you use a process dictionary. The so initial seeding will be done automatically at the first call with the time related functions available since ODP 18.0. You can read the source and you, you and it does the same thing like like in this slide although the module name is not random, it's rand. And so may, in many cases, you can simply remove the seeding function for the rand module. You don't have to write it explicitly if you, are, if you decide to depend on the process dictionary. And 6.2, seeding in random seed 3 slash 3 no longer works in rand seed. Uh, the function details are different. So um, you need to be aware of this uh, seeding function argument difference between random, random and random modules. The C slash three function no longer exists. So when you use uh, when you try to use RAND seed uh, 100, 200, 300 with three arguments, three integer arguments, this will fail, and you'll be you'll be surprised this will fail. But the, the correct way to seed this is to use the uh, ran seed with EXS plus. EXS plus is the na name of the default algorithm, and you have to specify this uh, for each ran seed function. And the next one, um, 100, 200, 300, is this actually three member tuple. This, this way, you will be getting the, the seeding in a proper way. So if you, if you, have, any, uh, if you have any questions, um, please refer to the OTP manual for the details. This is well described in the manual uh, the section of the RAND module. OK, 6.3. 
Do not assume the seed is stored as tuples on the RAND modules. On RAND module, the seed was a three-member tuple, and lots of code assumes this uh, using random, random module, and this, is, will no, this will no longer work on RAND module. The seeds are dependent on the algorithm and have two different formats, internal and external. And the internal format has the actual algorithm handler and the seed value, and the external one has the algorithm name, at name which is represented by atom, and the seed. So let me show you them. 6.3.1, internal seed format. Uh, when you execute, execute the function like this in the slides, you first get the two-member tuple. And the first member is actually a, a map, map, new structure uh, from the 17.0, I guess. And uh, the map contains uh, pointers, pointers, better say the f handler to the functions. And uh, there's um, another value called, called max, uh, which is, which is I, 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 th I think I believe that it's added by Dan Goodmanson for calculating the normal distribution function. And uh, the type means the, the name of the um, algorithm. And this is a very important part of the seed, because without this, you can't do anything on random module. And the second member was the two member of incomplete list. Uh, this is at the actual seed of the long integers. So this is the, how, this is the internal representation of the seed of the random module. And for other types of algorithms, seed part will be changed into, for example, EXS1024. It will be a 16 uh, long integers. So you cannot assume, no longer assume, three member tuple for a seed of a random, random or random module anymore. So 6.3.2. Use external format to transfer the state inside the process dictionary. Um, the RAND module have functions to export and import seeds with the external format. The export underscore seed underscore s slash one returns a given seed in an external format, and which can be ported by the either seed underscore s slash one or seed one. And the seed in the process dictionary can be obtained with export underscore seed slash zero function as well. So if you want, want to transfer the state or save the state into a file or a string or whatever, um, using these functions will ensure that both the algorithm and seed are correctly transferred. So use these functions. And one thing you have to remember that if the seed is not initialized, these functions will return you undefined. And if that is undefined, uh, when you transfer, when you try to uh, initialize, this, initialize the seed by the, the value undefined, the system will stop with the error. So you have to be aware of that. Okay, so let's go to number seven. The, the, the default, uh, use the default algorithm EXS plus if you don't have other needs. Um, if you have no specific reason to choose the algorithm in the random module, use the default EXS plus um, because it is specifically designed for 64-bit beam LLN virtual machine. Uh, I will explain it later, but um, uh, the designer of the um, XOR shift algorithm uh, f whose name is Sebastiano Vigna. Uh, Sebastiano, Sebastiano actually um, accepted the challenge of Dan Goodmanson, requested him to build a 116-bit random number generator, which is uh, kind of, kind of, a, kind of uh, extraordinary. But uh, Sebastiano, Sebastiano kindly calculated that and uh, generated that the optimized model for the request of error. He, uh, he, I think he was very kind. He's a, he's a true mathematician in that sense. And um, anyway, this is specifically designed for Erlen, and uh, we benchmarked it, and uh, the sp speed gain of moving, moving from exhaustive to 128 to 116 
is significant. So, and the, uh, if you have no reasons to express a reason to use other algorithm, use this algorithm for speed and pure erroneousness. These two can uh, coexist together. Okay, uh, let me explain other algorithms. There's uh, another algorithm called EXS 1024, which has uh, 1024 bits of internal state. And there's another algorithm called EXS 64. Okay, so let's get to the next, um, next topic. Number eight, try EXS 1024 algorithm around module for simulation. If you don't want to use any, any kind of external module, but um, if you think EXS Plus is not enough for your simulation purpose, uh, EXS 1024 will be there uh, for high pre precision simulation purpose, which requires a longer period. EXS 1024 will give you a better result. The period is much, much longer than EXS, EXS Plus, which is 2 to the power of 1024. And the execution time is only a bit more longer than twice as the EXS Plus. This is benchmarked. So um, if, you, if you are not so, so constrained about execution speed, uh, you can use this algorithm for simulation. Okay. So uh, the, next one, the next one, number nine. Use rand normal slash zero for normal distribution. Um, what we are talking about uh, from the beginning from uh, presentation to right now is not about the normality of the presentation, but it's actual. The, it's actually, uh, the, it is called the uniform distribution. Uniform means that every value from zero to the maximum, the, uh, the appearing probability is equal. It's called uniform distribution. But uh, for the statistician, it's not normal. Normal is something like this. And the normal means that um, um, it represents more, more. How should I say? I'm not. I'm not good at statistics uh, to tell you the truth. But uh, um, they say that it represents more normally about the uh, natural phenomena, ex uh, phenomena uh, such as um, such as the. Um, how should I say? Okay, the, this distribution. Um, is um, uh, there is a theorem called central limit theorem that if you sum up uh, lots of random numbers, the result of sum will be converging into this bell curve distribution. This is uh, I think this is the uh, the most concise ex explanation of central central uh, central limit theorem. Uh, please refer to Wikipedia. Wikipedia might be explaining much better than I do on this topic. But the, the reason why this uh, function is added to run module is that um, this w is very useful for the telecommunication purpose on determining errors and other uh, specific uh, issues, um, the failures, or um, uh, maybe you, you can use it on the uh, whether um, uh, on the binary binomial distribution or something like that. So, okay, I'm not I'm not going to the details of this, but the good thing is that you don't have to calculate by yourself about this distribution. Okay. All right, number ten, use SFMT for hardcore long time simulation. Hardcore means uh, if you're running simulation for more than one year or even or even or more than one year, a massive number of cores, and um, if you're really into running a simulation with a huge number of samples for a long time, the algorithm called simd oriented fast Mersenne twister or SFMT is there and is will be a good generator for you. It is invented by two Jap uh, two Japanese um, professor Makoto Matsumoto and Professor uh, Mutsuo Saito, and they built a uh, period of the pseudo random number generator, which has uh, the period of extremely long period, two to the power of 19,937. You won't be able to count that. Um, the issue is that this uh, means that the internal state of this random number, random number generator is very large, and uh, you can write it 
in pure Ireland. Actually, I did it. I submitted, I, I submitted and accepted, the, uh, and the, the paper was accepted on the ACM 2011 Ireland workshop. But um, it's, quite, it's quite slow. So I also uh, made a NIF, NIF version of this random number generator. And it's, um, I, th I think it's already commonly used, um, for example, by uh, Proper. Proper is a um, cost Sagonas tool. And um, I actually recently got the uh, request from the Elixir community people that they want to use SFMT for their random number generators, and they want, wanted to make, made, uh, make some changes of the uh, subtle details. So I accepted uh, their request, and it's very good that um, this stuff is actually being used. So um, if you are, if you really want something, um, a very something with a very long period, which will never ever calculate, um, probably in the um, in the um, probably until the end of the world. This will this will be a good one. And one thing good is that this algorithm is also available in hex already. So if you're using Elixir, you just get the SFMT package. Okay. So. Um, let me explain one thing about the, uh, how to use the uh, random number generator in a concurrent or parallel environment. You've got to check, uh, no, so number 11, check orthogonality of the random number, uh, I forgot the word number, but random number generators for concurrent or parallel operations. If you use concurrently generated random numbers in the same task, each process might gener must generate orthogonal sequences or independent sequences. In other words, if the sequences may overlap, uh, if uh, the sequences may overlap, if you just randomly choose the seed, may the, the, it would not reject the possibility of the overlapping, and that may, might cause the problem. Although the, um, uh, in most cases, the period is very long, so the possibility is very low, but it's not zero. Okay, before um, explaining this, um, I should show you this diagram. Um, if, you are, um, if you're not considering about overlapping, on the gen use the um, randomly generated seed for a random number generator. The overlapping sequence, which might be, oh, <coughs> right here, right here, two process will uh, use the same pa partly same number of sequence, and this would be this would be a disaster if you are trying to generate a real random matrices. Um, so so oh, when the uh, each member each each element of the matrices must be independently generated. So okay, and um, okay, I'm I'm going to explain it here. And uh, ho fortunately, there's an algorithm called jump function. Jump function is an equivalent function of calculate um, um, the of, of what do you say uh, iterating the seed for a very large number. Um, for example, the jump function for EXS plus is iterating two to, 50, two to the power of 58 sequence at one time. And for uh, EX1024, 2 to the power of 512. Oh, and uh, of course, it doesn't take that much time. Um, the the um, complexity is uh, proportional to the um, length of the length of the uh, number of the two to the power. So the it's maybe it's um, a little bit slower than uh, 58 times of execution or 512 times execution, but. Uh, it's much, much faster, and it's uh, absolutely feasible. And by using the jump functions here, there would be no overlapping between processes. And uh, some, in some use cases, this characteristic is a must. This is a requirement. So let me get back to the stage. So when you use, okay, 
So let me get back to number 11. Um, okay, I explained the, no the importance of non-overlapping sequences and for the jump functions. And um, Sebastian Vigna uh, provided jump functions. And that is very good for exhaustive, exhaustive stars and plus. And um, jump functions is also provided on SFMT and TinyMT. But um, I haven't implemented them, but they're available in C code already. And um, for TinyMT, there's a, there's a variant of SFMT called TinyMT, which has a much shorter period of 2 to the 128. It's still long, but uh, much shorter than SFMT. And it has the characteristic uh, polynomial um, and you can choose as many as two to the f two to the power of fifty-eight polynomials. But uh, the the problem is that calculating each polynomial takes um, one seventh of a second on a modern computer. I mean, a modern Xeon uh, or Intel Core computer. So if you want to use make use of this, you have to pre-calculate. So. I pre-calculated this while I was in the university, uh, uh, Kyoto University, and uh, I, I was uh, I was I had the freedom of computing using the computing resor resources. I calculated 200 million parameter sets of the tiny MT, and it's available on GitHub. And the entire repository is uh, more than uh, 82 gigabytes, so you, uh, I suggest you not to fork. But but you know, but it's available. It's available. The, I, I made it available. It, it's your turn to use it. So, the tiny, uh, so it's all, the tiny MT is also uh, the own version, also on hex package, and it's, the good thing about it is it, it, it's, it's in pure Allen. Okay. All right, so I explained this. So he says, it's, I, I have only five minutes left, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it fast. Number 12, use non-random external modules for OTP 17X or before. This means that even on OTP 17 or before, all these random numbers, algorithms explained in this presentation are already available. I've already put them on the GitHub so as an external uh, independent module. Uh, without depending on the maps, it, it uses record. It uses records solely. And so um, um, you, can you can use them for the old pro programs. And uh, please get rid of the random, random module as soon as possible. Okay, um, there's one, th one other thing to ex explain. If you, if you do have to make your application compatible with both random and run modules, you can use a wrapper. Tunsa Ayas, uh, he's a very um, active contributor of our community. He has built a wrapper module called Aron Rand Compat, which is used on Trick, a, a property tester, and, and the old rebar. And um, his, his module is very good, I recommend it. But um, um, on the reverse three commit, you can you can still see a better implementation. So if you can, if you if you want to um, uh, use uh, keep the compatibility with the many things, uh, refer to a reverse three code or use the Tunsus module. And there's another interesting story. Um, a Rabbit MQ engineer whose name is Jean Sebastian Pedron. Uh, he made it. He, he he had a lot lot of time experimenting on, to uh, realize the compatibility uh, between the random and run module, and he ended up to build their own. And it, I don't know whether this is the right way, but uh, this is uh, this is inevitable uh, regarding the wide use of RabbitMQ. So um, I support it, and. Uh, Fortunately, Alan, uh, on Alan, you can use the dynamic loading or other other type of uh, other type of the techniques of uh, the supporting the many uh, different implementation on the same function. But um, okay. But one thing I have to tell you is that if you implement your own modules for compatibility with all the OTP versions, you have to do it very carefully. All right, and uh, if you do need to write your own code and algorithm, please do, do check the st stochastic and statistics, statistic consistency and quality. There are many tools. Uh, I'm not go the time is running out, so I'm not going to explain in the details, and, but uh, on your own slides, I put a link, and they are very good algorithms, and uh, they, without passing them, you, your result might be a big failure. 
So I'm going to show you the failure example as the last one. Um, on 2011, at the ONSF Bay, I showed a PHP 5 case on Windows. There was a big failure. And I, this time I show you a V8 JavaScript enzyme failure, uh, which, was, which has been widely used in Chrome or everything, um, um, which was found and fixed in December 2015. What they were using was uh, actually a very short period of random number generator, which is insufficient for their use. And they uh, actually, they didn't pass the test U01. U test U01 means uh, uh, one of the test cases in the flavor tried. So this is the quite visible, visible um, example of failure. You see lines, horizontal lines. This is a big failure, right? That's all I want to explain here. And this is a new one on the V8, uh, V8 uh, JavaScript. This is actually the result of exhaustive 128 plus. Yeah, they, uh, they, yeah it's, it's good for them to um, uh, use a new algorithm, and that is very uh, good news. But even better news is that Aaron people uh, chose the exhaustive algorithm seven months before the BA team did. So I'm not saying we, we, we won, but uh, we did a very good thing. OK, so let me summarize this presentation. The time is <laughs> running out. Um, I strongly suggest you to use random module now. There are already many ways of migration from random to random module. And if you're security conscious, use crypto or w random, with a, uh, preferably with a hardware random number generator. If you don't use OTP 18 or later, please stop using random module anyway, because there are lots of other alternatives. And for the general warning, um, please do test your code before releasing it, especially if you try to, try to uh, invent your own random number generator. That, will, that, might be, that might cause a big failure. OK, so last but not least, I'd like to thank Dan Goodmanson for his contribution to random module overall development as a rigorous Allen code optimizer. He proposed a lot, lots of optimization, which I didn't come into my mind. And Sebastian Vigna, uh, a very talented mathematician, for kindly testing and providing the exhaustive 116 algorithm for Allen Beam, uh, which actually was requested by Dan. I think Dan, I think Dan was a very brave person on this. And our only solutions for giving many chances of talking over this topic. Without those people, the RAM module would have never come into being. And I really thank OTP team uh, to finally accept this idea after the five years of uh, after, after five years of my first proposal in 2011. So thanks. Uh, any questions? <laughs> Hello. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, it's more a remark, really. If you need access to secure cryptographic um, random numbers, then Jesper has made Enacle, which is also really good. It uses uh, yeah, yeah, Lipsodium. Yeah, e e Enacle Sodium. Okay. Yeah, it uses Lipsodium. So it has access to both the system call and, as a fallback, Devu Random. Okay, the, um, it's, it's not uh, actually a question. It's a suggestion that there's a module called Enacle and Lipsodium. Yeah, they are very good. And they are very good. They're very good. Um, maybe I'll... It's a wrapper, right? OK, it's a wrapper. OK, good. Thanks. Thanks for your information. Any other questions? Thank you for a nice talk. Um, I was at, at last number seven. I was wondering, you have uh, uh, 64 and then 1,024, and then there's 116. That, that's a bit of a funny number for me. Could you tell me a bit more about that number? Um, OK, um, you can refer to the Sebastian Vigna site on the latest development of exhaustive or the, he, re, he recently invented an even, even faster algorithm on the machine language of x86-64 architecture called XOR XO shift. I don't know how to read it, but uh, it's, an, it's a new algorithm. And he chose. He, he tested a lot of algorithms, 64, 128, 1024, 4096. And some of them have already been deprecated from his, his site, although the, uh, the algorithm was there. And uh, um, by, uh, when, I try, when, when I was thinking about implementing a new algorithm, I was looking for those stuff. And uh, 
um, unfortunately, I'm not a mathematician, so uh, I had to. I, all I could check is to is to run the C code and build our own code and exactly check the error every sequence is on the same side on the, on the different C's. So um, the not the choice of 128 or 1024 is not arbitrary then. It's done. It's uh, I should say it's done by uh, Sebastiano Vigna himself. Is it, do I do I answer your question? But why? So why that number? Is it? What, what, why that number? Why 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 that number? Because um, um, uh, according to the Sebastiano's um, Sebastiano's website, he wanted to implement those. Uh, code as fast as possible, running as fast as possible on the 64-bit computers. So it's a uh, it's a multiple of 64. And um, and I I I have no idea about the whole the the, the, the rigorous details on why those numbers. But uh, 120, I think 128 or 116 or two to the power of 116 is enough for um, modern use. At least for now, N maybe not in 30 years later, but at least for now. Okay. Uh, an integer on a 64-bit machine doesn't actually have 64 bits. Oh uh, yeah, I should because explain that. Um, four bits going for the tag. Uh, with a few uh, uh, yeah, the, can fit it in an, the, uh, the participant explained explain that the why why it's not it was not 64. Um, the all in six, uh, 64 in 64 beam. The first four bits, uh, the top four bits are actually used by used as tags, and the rest only 60 bits could be represented as a short integer. And uh, re regarding the algorithm, you have to uh, cut another two bits. So why it why it become 58 was the reason or restriction of the RM beam. Okay. Okay. Uh, round of applause for Kenji Rikitake. Thank you. We'll assume the session two o'clock in the afternoon.